Hi, beautiful people. Welcome back. If you're new, welcome. My name is Georgia. So we are going to do a recap and a review of Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 9, Episode 2, titled Thruple in Paradise. So if you remember it, the last episode we left off, the ladies were still at the dinner table and we had it where Stormy straight up asked Melody, um, do you have anything to say about how your millimeters are coming at us as business owners and stuff and um, Melody was like I have nothing to say so then we have Stormy saying well you not saying anything is saying a lot say less say less so um, we had some awkward silence at the table and then we had Shanita say to Stormy so with her saying anything what do you want her to do what do you want her to say to the to the Melamita she's like well at least address it you know say something but then we have melody come in the comments and say you know what as a business owner i wouldn't have anybody coming to my establishment and carrying on like that to the point where i'm getting arrested she said it's called 911. hello we have a disturbance here at such and such address i need the assistance of the police so she's basically saying that stormy should have called the police on miss black titanic and not let it get to that point where you know she's the one who ended up having to turn herself in because she announced it to them at the table she said what you guys don't know with their harassment and stuff i had one millimeter show up at my establishment trying to film and carrying on or whatever and because of that i had to turn myself into the police so everybody's like really really quiet but i think they already they had already heard about that because it was all over social media so I don't know if I don't think that was the first time of them it might have been the first time for some folks but it wasn't for the others but um Stormy was like all right Mel I see where you stand you know you're letting me know where you stand and to Mel's point she didn't say anything at the table she just basically shut down she just had a blank look on her face no emotion no anything but in the confessional she did say that she would have called 911 and handled that situa situation She's saying that Stormy must have did something for her to get arrested for because it wouldn't just be a frivolous, um, uh, it wouldn't be um, unjustified. So, all right, with that now, they try to change change the subject. So, Tisha, Letitia, Letitia asks Trisha about, she said, um, you know, when we are at the gym and we asked you about Martel coming over, you said it didn't happen, but then what are you saying now? So Tisha was like, well, I did go to his house, but nothing happened. So Stormy was like, but wait a minute. When I asked you at the gym, you said nothing like that happened. So why are you changing your mind? She said, well, but at the time when you asked me, I didn't want to talk about it, but now I'm changing my uh, mind. So we have Shanita's like, wait a minute. So you over here telling lies, getting on um sunny between what's going on between her and sunny and you got your own mix-up situation going on over there so trisha was like yeah um i just didn't talk about it. again mel is sitting there with a blank stare on her face they're trying to figure out the timeline of when trisha went to martel's house if they were he was still married at the time so we had leticia say so you're telling us that you guys only met up to go over his workout package and then you left and then she was like yeah and then we have we have um she needed looking at her like mm -hmm, you're right she's like that was all right that was all right we also had kimmy jumping in the middle giving her opinion so everybody had a little bit to say but at the end of the day everybody's looking at trisha like girl you a liar so you know what this might be a one season for trish one season trish that's what i'm gonna start calling her one season trish because she flip flopping all over the place and like in this group they try to be as transparent as they can we don't want no liar amongst us and if you can't be trusted nobody gonna want to film with you so girl i don't know this might be your only season high and by as they say so all right now um we're, it's the next day so we have Trish and Stormy leaving. They, they, some of the ladies are out by the pool and they're like, where y'all going? 
She's like, we leave it early. And um, they're like, why? So they're telling what's going on with their family. So it ended up to be like what they say, kid stuff. We have Chess having his first t-ball game. And I think Trisha's daughter have a, a recital that she needs to make. So they ended up leaving. So now at the pool, we have Kimmy, Letitia, and um, Tisha, as I call her, and Melody. So they're talking. Melody comes back. How's the water? How's everything? Blah, 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 blah. And one of them told her that the two ladies left. She's like, what? They didn't even say goodbye. Imagine, you come on my trip, and the basic thing that you should have learned as a child, you leave and don't say goodbye. That's not cool. She's like, well, I know where to stand, so whoever is not here, that's on them. So whoever needs to be here is here. So Bella's basically saying she's done with those two. But as we know, Stormy um, left the show in April, and um, I don't know if Trish is going to be back. I know I'm jumping from the show too on social media. So after this episode aired the other day, I saw where Stormy posted that the case, um, the case between her and uh, Miss Blytanic was dismissed. She's saying that, um, you know, the case is dismissed and there's nothing more to it. She had some kind of, she put up some sort of Instagram post talking about it, but she basically said the case is dismissed and nothing else is gonna come of it. So. There we have it. It went through all of that, stressing her out. And yeah, and in that same post, she did answer a fan who said, you know, you don't need to be on that show. You just need to focus on your business. And she said, well, I've done, I've left the, the show since April. So we know that she's actually gone. There was a back and forth of whether she's here or, in the, or there, but she did say on that post that she left the show in April. So back at the pool now, we have Melody and um, the... The, uh, the OGs, I should call them. Melody, Tisha, and Kimi talking. And Mel was saying that, you know, no, Tisha said to her, she's like, you kind of shut down last night. You know, we're trying to have a conversation and you kind of shut down. She said, well, you know, I have had thoughts and some of the thoughts that I have have been confirmed. So Tisha was like, so what do you mean? What, what was confirmed for you? She said, um, Stormy. She said the, the fact that what's going on with Stormy behind the scenes as far as her not being here for us on the show and, you know, the stuff with her mom and everything that's going on in social media, she just let me know where she is. And I'm, I'm cool with that. We don't have to move forward together, and I'm fine with that. So then um, Melody also said it was kind of weird having Destiny sitting, you know, right next to her on her left side because she's like what's her game plan she's like you know you, she really truly does not trust destiny as much as she did i don't think she ever fully trusted destiny because he she is a, a real friend of martel just destiny is and you know that's how melody met destiny through martel and knowing how he is as she say he's a hoe you know everybody knows that about him She's still wondering if there was something there. So she said, it was kind of uncomfortable to have her next to me because I truly don't know where her intentions are. And um, that's where it is right now. But then Tisha was like, but you and her still got a chance to talk. So maybe there's some mending of, of friendships, relationship. It's a, it's a positive, it's a step in a positive direction. And Melody was just looking at her like, okay. <laughs> Okay, I said what I said. I don't have nothing else to say. I'm not revealing too much. You can sit there and believe what you want. That's the look she had on her face. Um, then she also, well, we did talk about Stormy being delusional, putting all the blame on Miss Titanic because Mel said, if it was me, I would have done call 911. It wouldn't even have reached this far. So um, the girls asked her, so what do you think about Trish? She said, well... Since I've met her, she's been flip-flopping, telling one lie, reversing it. She's up, she's down, she's around. Mm -mm. In my opinion, she's a liar. She's like, stories change all the time with her. And look at her hating on Sunny when she got her own stuff happening. Like she can't tell a, she can't tell a story, a good story to save her life. So they're like, yep, that's one season, Trish. That's my name for her. I don't think we're going to see her again. Tired of the same old styles? Ready to make waves with your wardrobe? Welcome to Touch Me Textures. 
where bold meets beautiful and every piece is designed to turn heads. Our collections are all about textures that feel as good as they look. From flowy dresses to eye-catching accessories, we've got everything you need to express your style your way. Find pieces that speak to you for every vibe, every adventure. And the best part? Our site makes it easy to shop and easy to fall in love with everything. So why wait? Dive into style that's uniquely yours at touchmetextures.com. Feel fabulous, look unforgettable. Click the link in the description to check out all we have to offer. So now the ladies finish, you know, their little morning dip at the pool. They're going out now on a boat, right? They're going on a catamaran and some more uncomfortable conversations were had. So it's all the ladies who came on the trip, excluding, of course, the two that left. So some of the conversations that were had on the catamaran was um, about Trish and Stormy leaving. Again, Mel said, you know, basic thing you learn when you're a child is please and thank you. Just basic manners. And they didn't have any. They just left. And um, somebody asked about, who asked her? Shanita asked about Trish going to Martel House. And she think that Trish gave up the hot pocket. Like she called, she's like, she gave Martel a little hot pocket. But I don't think so. I honestly don't think it happened because remember when um, Martel and her met at Stormy's house and he shook her hand as, as far as saying, you know, nice to meet you, whatever, whatever. And he made the statement that, you know, I really don't know her, especially if I didn't get some from her. So I really don't think that um, it went that far. But I did think, I do think that they did meet up at his house while he was married because they're trying to figure out the timeline. It happened while he was married, probably at the end of his divorce when he was separated, but he was still married. So Martel is known around town as a H-O-E, as they say. <laughs> okay, so now we're back on the, on, the, on the boat. And to find something to talk about, we have Miss Nell saying, so Destiny, how are you and Lucky? A.K.A. Lance, her son. And everybody's like, what? What you talk about? So Miss Nell said she that her that Destiny and Lance are dating. She could see the chemistry there. This is in the confessional now. She said she don't think it's gonna last because Lance just got out of a marriage. She didn't say whether he was divorced. Maybe he's separated as well. She said Lance just got out of a married and um he's probably looking to have a little fun with Destiny, and that's where it is. Remember, there was also a rumor that Destiny was also dating um, Kimmy's son, Jalen, and he is a baby. So I don't know. Look like Destiny. The young boys are coming for you, girl. That's what they like. they like. The youngins like you, so they're coming for you. But Miss Nell says she don't think it's going to go anywhere. They're just going to have some fun. And um, that's where it is. I believe somebody asked her, so what if, if Kimmy becomes your daughter-in-law? And she just had this look at her face like, mm -mm, I don't know about that. I think she's putting it out there to let Destiny know, listen, girl, this not going to be serious. I know my boy, and I know it's not going to be serious. And he might just get back with his wife. So don't even think this is going to go anywhere. So poor Destiny is left out there on the island all by herself, not in a relationship. Everybody, well, no, Melody, Melody is also single. So maybe they'll become friends and stuff. I don't know. I'm not even going to put it there. I don't think Melody's ever going to trust her again, so... I don't know, Destiny. You might be out there by yourself. So what was it with the Le, barrack? That was really quick. The fact that um they were dating. And even though she refused to take his last name, they still got married, had a child, and got divorced. That was a whirlwind. I think that happened within a matter of, what, two years? Everything happened with them? Hmm. I don't know. And I still want to know why LeBarrick... Do we know why LeBarrick divorced her so quickly? Right after, um, a couple of weeks after their son was born? What happened with that? 
If you guys know what happened with that, put it in the in the comments. I would like to know what happened with that myself. All right, so we're back on the cat catamaran, still trying to find something to talk about. And Miss Nell asked Sonny, Sonny, you got any kids? Oh my gosh. Remember, Destiny's sitting right there, not literally arm's length away from Sonny. So I know that was an uncomfortable conversation because, you know, Destiny is still, as they say, in love with Moses. So why we, and, and did plan to have other kids, have more kids with him. So why are we talking about it? So of course, Sonny wasn't rude. She answered the question. She's like, well, I'm doing IVF right now. It's very hard and we're trying. But um, Sonny did go in a confessional and say that, you know, having a conversation in front of Destiny is hard because she doesn't want to be the source of her pain anymore. But she still don't want to take away from the good things that are happening to her. So I don't know how they're going to navigate this and, um, and make it go forward. So now Mel goes around and she's like, you know what? We're coming to the end of our trip. I would like to ask you guys to just sum up your trip the word just give me one word to sum up this trip so the ladies go around first she started out with tisha tisha's like no circle back come back around to me she she went back she went around miss nell said it was exhausting um i believe destiny said it was too much i think shanita said she was grateful um who said revealing Melody said, um, I forget what Melody's word, but, but there was, Tisha used a word that we've never heard of, and thank God it's in the dictionary, because I've never heard of this word, growthful. So, the definition of growthful is to see change for the better. So, maybe Tisha with her two MBAs, girl, she know a lot more than us, she just keep quiet. So, yeah, she used the word growthful, and I think, um, Melody went in the confessional to kind of make fun of her, saying, you know, thank God it's a word in the dictionary. Where she get that word from? Um, her mama sure don't use that word, because we all know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Woo. We all know Miss Wanda and her words. When she get come on her Facebook Live or her Instagram Live and she talk. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tisha, I'm sorry I'm laughing at your mom, but you know your mom would be using some words where we're like, what she say? But it's her own language, and we kind of understand it, and we love her for it. But uh, Melody was making fun in the confessional of Tisha Mama. So, yeah, well, she always, this one that always coming for Mel anyway. So Mel get her a little lick back in a way. So the word was growthful. So Mel said, okay, you know what? Let's all write our word on a piece of paper. We're going to put it in a bottle and we're going to throw it in the ocean. And the ladies were all for that because they're saying that's something that is they've always wanted to do. So that's how they ended the catamaran ride. Tired of the same old styles? Ready to make ways with your wardrobe? Welcome to Touch Me Textures, where bold meets beautiful and every piece is designed to turn heads. Our collections are all about textures that feel as good as they look. From flowy dresses to eye-catching accessories, we've got everything you need to express your style your way. Find pieces that speak to you for every vibe, every adventure. And the best part, our site makes it easy to shop and easy to fall in love with everything. So why wait? Dive into style that's uniquely yours at touchmetextures.com. Feel fabulous, look unforgettable. Click the link in the description to check out all we have to offer. Now, the last scene of the, um, they're still not done with the trip, but the last scene of this episode is the guys. All the guys are getting together. They're going to do, um, archery, you know, where they're shooting the bow and arrows at a target. They all come together. They, of course, the bromance. We have Marcel with his what up do. Everybody, what up do. But I know with seeing Marcel that we're going to get a little bit of comic relief and we do get it towards the end of this scene. So we have all the guys competing. It so happens that Ken 
is hitting the bullseye. That's Trisha's, um, that's Trisha's fiance. He's hitting the bullseye, and then um, they take a break now. So Martel pulls, pulls Moses and pulls um, Chris Fletcher to the side because Martel want to know. Listen, I still have the house here selling. Y'all want it or what? So that's what he did. He asked Moses. So you guys, you re- how was is the house? Is it something that you're looking for? Are you ready to move? Are you guys settled into Huntsville? So um, Moses was like, No, we got to wrap up some things on the other end in St. Louis, in Missouri. So, so he was like, all right. So he was like, we might buy it as an investment property, but we're looking for something a little bit bigger. So come, so now we know what, what stuff they had to wrap up. If you were following on social media, we know that Moses was not supposed, was not cleared by his probation officer to travel to Alabama. He, he up here flying back and forth, driving back and forth, however you get back and forth in another state where you're not supposed to be there and because of that now we know that he was um arrested and put back in prison i'm not sure for how long but sonny confirmed that matt moses is um you know back in prison and he wasn't supposed to be in alabama so he came to alabama for the show i'm sure y'all both know that you weren't supposed to be there sonny and as your husband you're supposed to work as a group and make sure you advise each other on things of what to do or what not to do. She's saying this is the first time she's ever been in a relationship like this where she has to deal with the jail system. And uh, she didn't know that um, certain things are supposed to happen. Come on, that's common knowledge. That if you're on probation, you can't leave the city without the specific permission of your parole officer. So Moses was not supposed to be in Huntsville filming, running around, and stressing out destiny. And because of that, you know, he was arrested and put back in prison. So Moses was like, no, we're not ready yet. And if we do buy it, it's going to be for, it's going to be an investment property. So he said, we want a little something bigger. And Marta was like, so you're going to buy, you're going to build what? He's like, he's not sure. He says like, let me know because, you know, I do both. You know, we have Chris here who will do the buying for you. And if you need to build, I'll also do the building and stuff for you. So he was like, all right. So, um... So the conversation came up about the two ladies and I believe somebody asked him who you're going to be with or whatever. And he's like, my wife, you know, my wife is my wife. And, um, so I want to know who's going to be the side chick. He's like, you know, who's going to be the side chick. And Chris was like, nah, I ain't going to laugh to that one because that shit ain't funny. So now they walk back over to the other guys and they know they're chopping it up. Just talking about stuff. And Marceau now brings up the subject about Martel and Tris. So he's like, I heard that Tris trained you. Martel like, hell no, ain't got no woman training me. And Ken was like, but you know she could do both though because she be training me and she killing me in the gym. And Marta was like, yeah, whatever, but I ain't having no woman changing me. So Marta, Marcel was like, um, let's, let's, let's rewind a little bit and find out how do you, how did you guys meet or whatever. And he's like, I heard that you see him in her, in her DM, Martel. And he was like, yeah, that's what happened. You know, if I'm scrolling, I'm seeing whatever, I'm going to decide if I'm going to pursue that or not. And Martel is ridiculous. Martel, this is why you're married. You're doing all of this. I'm going to pursue somebody if I find them attractive. And um, Ken brought up the fact that, you know, he, he had to have a discussion with Trish about what happened because he wasn't with her at the time, but he just don't like the fact that she didn't tell tell him. You're not really supposed to tell your ex about your past relationships. If it's not going to mingle, if it's not going to come into your current one, they're not supposed to know so much in case y'all didn't know that because they'll use it against you in the long run. So if you know that there's no chance of, you know, your past overlapping with your present, do not talk about it. So he said he had to have a discussion with Trish about it. And then we have Marceau getting, getting in the confessional saying that he don't understand why Kenny's over here defending Trish so, bu- so much about a story that she told him. He's like, your married fiance told you a story. So I tend to believe what Martel is saying because at least he was in the room when whatever happened, happened. I'm like, all right. So that was funny. Then we have Ken asking Marceau. He's like, I heard you met up with Marquise. Marquise, if you remember, is Trisha's husband who she's separated from. 
and i remember that scene very well and i must say i applauded marcel for what he did with marquette marquez not marquise marquez because marquez is kind of bragging in my opinion that you know he walked away from his family he said he walked away from trisha he didn't leave his kids and marcel was like no dude when you left you left everybody and we have somebody stepping in and stepping up and you don't like that you don't want to be with her but you don't want her to be with anybody and that's not right so um they had a discussion about that um then we have ken you know talking talking and at one point he said this is the second married woman i've been involved with and they were like wait a minute martel in his confessional said you know what i think ken might be a professional side dude because this is the second one you've been in i'm like whoa so um again in the confessional the guys came one of them said why are they still married you've been separated all this time trisha has been married she has been having relationships you know with other people why are they still married you know they're saying why are they still married and you know that is where the episode ended with the guys on the archery um the archery park hanging out and talking and stuff like that so with the next um upcoming episode i think we're gonna see the ladies having their final dinner i think it's an all white dinner because i see all the ladies in um in white dresses and mel is gonna sum up the trip and you know just bringing it to a close tighten a pretty pretty bow and then we have we see maurice and kimmy talking about ken and trish and maurice actually makes the statement that he thinks that ken loves trish more than she loves him and that's what i've been saying it shows it shows that he's very patient at one point we did have courtney saying that ken is a good dude and he's putting up with a lot because he would not be in a situation like that he would have to um the the person would have to be fully divorced before he pursue anything like that so that was his opinion regarding ken and trish and we also see a scene where Trish, Marquez, and Ken are sitting at the table have a discussion. So that should be pretty interesting going into the next episode. But yeah, the ladies are still on their St. Thomas trip. They are wrapping it up. I think um, I think Stormy has, had, did make her decision at that table at that point that she was walking away from the show. And she and Trish left. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think it was a really good girls trip. Because they got some things sorted out, you know, based on other reality TV shows that, I've, that I'm watching. The girl strip never end where they have a solution or, you know, an actual, you know, discussion where things are solved. It's always still arguing and they bring it back home. They take it on the next girl trip. They bring it back home, so on and so forth. So it was good to see them actually have a full discussion. Well, yeah, guys, that is my recap and my review of this episode of our Love and Marriage Huntsville season two episode. I mean, season nine, season nine, episode two titled Thruple in Paradise. Make sure that you go below and check out all the links in the description. Also, um, like this video, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, be sure to take care of yourselves and your families. Bye-bye.